Hi everyone, thanks for joining us for another one of Power 365's Power Short. In this video, we'll be taking a look at using a HTTP action in Power Automate by API integration. To demonstrate this, I'll be using it with the Google Maps API to calculate driving distance. Right, so I'm going to swing straight into a demo. All I've done so far is set up a Power Automate flow and initialize a variable called API. The API key is something that I've had to set up prior to this video where I've authenticated myself with the Google API and they've given me a token or a piece of information which will help me authorize my API request when I pass it across. I'm just going to go ahead now and add the HTTP action. The HTTP action, there's a number of things that we can fill out on this, but I'm just going to cover off the basic methods. We've got get, put, post, patch, delete. Typically, we're going to see get and post. Get being a read request, post being a write request. And this would be the format in which we're going to send across our information. URI or Uniform Resource Identifier looks like a URL. Um, this is where we're going to target our HTTP request and is outlined within the documentation. Headers is typically additional information. It's usually where if you're using OAuth as an authorization method, you'll see your token contained within here. But we can also put in pieces of information such as the content, which will tell us what the body is or the format of the body, typically JSON in our case, as well as we could set it as accept. Accept being what we would like to receive back. And this is where an API might have more than one format which it can respond in. Um, again, typically we're going to be using JSON. Queries is usually going to be search parameters and we're going to be using these today. So I'll cover them in more detail as we go. Through. Um, body, again, it's additional information. Uh, sometimes we're requested to pass that extra information across. Um, it, and this is where we specify the format in the header as I've already described. Right, so I'm just going to jump across the documentation. I've already got us to the point where we need to be. Um, so if we look down, this is really all the information that we're going to need for this one. Um, the HTTPS part here, this is going to be our uniform resource identifier. For the moment, we're just going to lift this as it is and pass that into the URI. Just going to jump back across. Um, so I know for this one, I'm trying to receive information. So it's going to be a read request. So I'm going to set the method to get. And then going back to the documentation again, we can see that really as a minimum, what we need to be passing across is the destination, the origin, the unit, and the key. The key being the piece of information that I've already set up. So. I can tell from the question mark here that these are actually all going to be queries in this case. Um, it means the API will be visible in the URL. So it's something to be mindful of. Um, it's also why I say it up in a, uh, a variable from the start, just so it's hidden from everyone for the time being. But I'm just going to lift each one of these out and put it in as a query. I'm going to start with a destination. And then I'm just going to place a value. So you can go with London for this. I'm going to go with origins. Obviously, it's going to be where we start from. I'm going to set this as Essex. Uh, units being imperial. So I'm going to keep that as it is, just so we get it back in mileage. And then the key. So the key in this instance is where I'm going to use our dynamic content of the API that I've already set up. So essentially, this is all we've got to do. So we're just going to follow the documentation that we've been given. It's going to outline us everything that we need, and we're just going to place it in and fill it out. The hardest thing a lot of the time is just identifying where things need to be. Um, usually, it'll specify it quite well. Um, it's just fortunate in this case, I know. As I can see the question mark and the way it's built up, it's like a search parameter. So it's going to be a query that we need to pass. 
Right, so that's pretty much all the information that we're going to need on here for what we need to do today. I know it defaults for the uh, method of transport to driving in this instance, but I will show you quickly how you can find out some of these additional parameters you can use. So if we go across the documentation, we've got the distance matrix request and response. So as you go through here, you can see a variety of other aspects or other parameters that we can pass across, such as things to avoid, tolls, for instance, if we don't want to pay tolls. Departure time, we can set a departure time, but it needs to be in the future. That's something to note. Um, and mode, so as you can see here, drive and default. But there are a few other things. Essentially anything that you can do in the Google Maps uh, app, as you would normally use it, you can do within the API. So I'm just going to hop back across now onto my Power Automate flow. Just going to save what we've got. And we're in a position now we can just send this across and uh, hopefully get a response back. So I'm just going to do a manual test. And fingers crossed, it's going to work. Brilliant. So as you can see here, we've got status code 200 back, which means our request was successful. Um, we can now go and lift the raw outputs where you can see the distance here. It's 32.9 miles with a duration for an hour. So that's great. We've got some information back. What I'm going to do now is show you how to use that um, or how we might be able to use that within our data. So I'm just going to copy this for the moment. And I'm going to go back and edit our Power Automate flow. So I'm going to add a new step in. And because we know this response, as I was saying earlier, is we typically we're going to get in JSON because that's exactly what we want. So we've got a pass JSON feature. So I'm going to take the body of my HTTP response. Um, and I've just copied back the uh, response that we received last time. And I'm going to generate a sample from the sample that I've got. I'm going to generate the, the JSON schema. That's just kindly gone off and done the JSON schema straight away for us. Um, and what that's going to allow us to do is utilize the information that's been passed back in other parameters throughout our Power Automate. So just to show you what I mean by that, I'm going to add in a compose action. And under that compose action, we're going to look at the dynamic content that's now available. So I'm just going to initially show you the HTTP request. Um, so you can see the actions or the, the outputs from the HTTP action. We only actually get body headers and status code. Um, I'm now going to just scroll up and show you the past JSON. You can see that we get the same sort of base level items where we've got body, status code, and item. But now actually we can get a lot further into it with a variety of different items. We can then go ahead and utilize that within the flows, pass it back into the database, or even use it to canvas apps by passing response back in. Um, hopefully this video has been helpful to you in explaining some elements of the HTTP action and some of the ways that we can use them. Uh, thank you for watching and goodbye.